No Blake, no messages. Hi. Do you know what I was just about to... I was going to call the police. You Sorry. cannot disappear on me without telling me where you no. are going. I actually thought that Alan had something to do with... I know this look, honey. You've done something. What have you done? Should I turn down the bed, Miss Bowling? Yeah. I'm sorry, what'd you say? The bed. Should I should I turn it down? Oh no. Don't bother. Are you all right, Miss Bowling? I'm fine. Do you have any brothers or sisters, Ginger? Do I have any brothers and sisters? Three of each, and I'm the baby and the shortest. You know that I have only one brother. Mother and father are all gone. So that just leaves the two of us. Well, if you're feeling lonely or you can't sleep tonight and you'd like to play a game of gin rummy, shoots and ladders, <coughs> you just buzz my buzzer. <sighs> I'm gonna remember that. Good. Good night. in my side. But I can't imagine a world without you in it. You win some million dollars. Get a pizza. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You're still here. Yeah, I had work to do. What'd you do? Feel a need to sort mail again? No, I just wanted to make sure that we were still on for tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And I have some business that I need to discuss with Fletcher. Oh. Later. I don't care what it is. Okay, fine, Butch, but come and see me when you're finished here. I want to talk to you about Tangent. What about me? It's, it's just about the job that we have you doing. You know, the personal stuff. What about it? Well, you're too smart for it. Look, the article that you wrote for us on my father, I mean, it was first rate, and I wanted to ask Fletcher why it is we're wasting a talent like yours on busy work. Because that was the only job available at the moment, and that is the one she took. Now, will you two, please, be quiet, leave me alone? Fletcher, I'm sorry. Alan Michael, in case you haven't noticed, I'm perfectly capable of speaking up for myself if I need to. No problem. Hey, uh, how come you're moving back in? I mean, I think it's great that you're gonna be staying here. I just got this great new video game. You wanna come play with us? It'll be fun. Should I call Nick? No, no, don't do that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, come here. Thanks for helping me. No, no, it's, it isn't Bridget I want to talk to. It's Matt. Oh, okay. Oh, where are you? I need to explain. Vanessa! It's me. Open up. Is my wife here? Yeah, she's here. She doesn't want to talk to you. You told me I should do whatever I could to save my marriage. How am I supposed to do that if I can't talk to my own wife? I don't know. Some other time, okay? Not to... No, I can't wait till another time. I need to see her now. Nick, it's not my decision, okay?
This portion of Guiding Light is presented by a powerful new Ultra Mr. Clean. Now you can Mr. Clean it to the Ultra Shine. Just tell Melinda that I'm here. That's all I'm asking. Look, I don't think you're listening. She refuses to see you. Is she all right? Yeah. That is, she will be all right. What do you mean, now that she's away from me? Well, you're wrong, Vanessa. This is not the end. This is just a rough spot that we have to get through. And we're going to do it because we still love each other. Fine. I'm not the person that needs to be convinced of that. Yeah, well, it's going to be really hard to, to do that if you keep drumming it into her head that I've changed so Wait much. Wait a minute. I haven't said anything like that. She's a grown woman. She makes up her own mind about right. this kind okay. of thing. Okay, all right, all right. Look, I just... I need you to know that I am not this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde that you think that I've turned into. I haven't suddenly become some unscrupulous, power-hungry maniac, all right? The fact is, Vanessa, I've been in way over my head. When I was a reporter, I covered the news in Cambrai for months, okay? The war there. But it was never nearly as treacherous as what's going on down in Spalding Enterprises. I mean, at least in those ditches, I knew who the enemy was. I knew what was at stake. But believe me, I was like a babe in the woods when it came down to my mother and Uncle Alan warring with each other. Sorry, Nick. You looked pretty sure of yourself to me when you were talking about bailing out Louis Oil. Yeah, look, I was reacting to circumstances that I didn't put into motion, okay? And I know, I know, I, I made some terrible, terrible choices of judgment along the way. And I, I, I know I shouldn't have done it, okay? But the, the, what happened, Vanessa, is that I convinced myself into believing that, that this was a harmless means to a necessary end. You know what I think? I think you wouldn't be talking like this if your manipulations had worked. You wouldn't be kicking yourself if they hadn't. Wow, you really, you really think that I'm a lost cause, don't you? I just think people's actions speak louder than their words. And don't you think it's possible for a person to learn from their mistakes? Do you believe in a second chance? Of course I do. Of course I do, but the point is, Mindy is upset tonight. She's, she doesn't want to see you. Look, the longer this takes, the worse it's gonna get, okay? I'm a husband. I know better than anybody what she needs right now. What she needs is to reassurance. She needs to know that she doesn't ever have to worry about me again. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But she's gonna be the one to tell you when she wants to talk. All right, look, you obviously don't understand. I need to see her right now. Nick, I think you should leave. Ed? Yeah. Bad time? No, it's a good time. Come on in. What's up? I just um, wanted to drop off the program for the charity ball. It came back from the printer. Oh, in case the event slipped my mind since we discussed it at length this afternoon. <clears throat> well, Eve's working late and Michelle's at a friend's. Doing her homework, so I just thought I'd bring down the Christmas stuff from the attic and sort of dust it off. I don't know it's a little early. You think I should put this corny thing up on the roof again? I'm afraid if I don't, Michelle's gonna think something important is missing. Oh, Ed, I think the only important thing she'd miss at Christmas would be you. I've got to be honest with you. I mean, I, I know you must be terrified at the thought of leaving Michelle alone. Just taking it one day at a time. Yeah, I know. I meant what I said today about uh, all the people at Cedars, the whole community who believes in you, who supports you, and who really wants you back at work. I'm one of them, of course, and I must admit our motives aren't totally altruistic because Connor and his uh, joke as chief of staff, you've never been so appreciated. That's very nice to hear, thanks. Okay, I didn't come here just to compliment you or to give you a program. I found your letter of resignation on your desk, and I took it. Look, this is business, Tanji. I'm one of the owners of this newspaper. One of three owners? Okay, but I still have a say in what goes on around here and who does one what. One third of a say. I am tired of people like Tanji, very bright and very talented people that are being used as, as paper pushers. Come on, anybody can, can enter and add into a computer, but not everybody can write like you can. I think the journalist is missing out. 
Oh, excuse me. I guess what I am doing or trying to do is not as essential to the journalists. You strutting around here, puffing out your chest for your oh, girlfriend. Oh, and we wouldn't be the least bit modest now, would we, Fletch? I think I want to talk to you. What? What? What about? Because I don't like the way you've decided what's good for me, and then you're just going to go for it. Wait a minute. I'm... I'm giving you a high-profile position that a lot of people around here would really kill for, plus more money. You find that insulting. I find your attitude insulting. Well, I find yours off the wall. Okay, forget it. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I've no, wait, wait a minute. This, this is not... No, so... just stop don't, clapping don't your you... lips. I don't want to talk to you about it. My monitor, my article! You are dog me, Dark Prince! Look, I'm really sorry that I, I worried you. I, I didn't mean to disappear like that, but you know what? I didn't know how, any other way to do it. Do what? I knew you were going to stop me. You were going to argue with me. And I really thought that this was worth a chance. What was? Honey, I didn't want to tell you how scared I was about this missing money. But I can tell you now, I was panicked. I was not about to sit around and wait for Alex to find out that the money she entrusted to you, the million dollars plus, that you don't know where it is, and the clerk at the bank says you took it, and I know you're innocent. And I wasn't going to wait around for a scandal Blake, to develop. what did you do? I went by the bank. The bank is closed. What do you do at a closed bank? Well, I was hoping to talk to a security guard to ask him some questions, but I hit the jackpot. Oh, honey. Oh, no, 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 don't worry, I didn't break in. But I did have a very enlightening interview with the manager. And what happened with the bank manager? Well, she's obviously a workaholic, has no life, and a snot I don't care if she was there to eat the bank. What did you do? I'm telling you, I got the videotape. What videotape? The tape of every person who went in and out of the bank the day that the Spalding money was withdrawn. How could this happen? <laughs> I love them so much. Don't they realize that? Grief, mm. I can't be losing them all. <laughs> oh. oh. Come back. I couldn't stay away. I was going crazy. Oh, I know. I miss you so much. My life is so empty without you. What about Spalding? Listen, darling, I have learned so much about what's really, really important. It's a lesson I'm never going to forget. I don't know. Where did that come from? You'll never change, will you, Alexander? Why did I think you could ever change? Business before no. pleasure, business before everything. No, no, it's not that way anymore, Fletch, please. Don't lie to me. Stop lying to yourself. I'm not lying to you. I love you. Please. You don't know how to love anybody. <laughs> Goodbye, Alexandra. Oh, Fletch, you don't have to go. No, please. Fletcher, don't go. Don't go. Fletcher, Fletcher don't go. Uh, Fletcher, I'm sorry about that. Look, I, it, it was an accident. I didn't mean to do that. I, I, what I meant to do is I meant to pull out Tangie's computer. Look, can you get it back? Uh, look, I, I think I know... Don't touch anything. Look, you have every right to be mad at, as mad at me as you want to be, but I think the important thing right now is to retrieve that copy, right? Oh, so it's now that you think it's important that my work merits some consideration. Now it is important that we have some professional standards. Where were those noble intentions two minutes ago when I was begging you to leave me alone? Look, Fletcher, everybody, you know, is allowed to be a jerk every now and then, even you. You know what, hello, Michael? You still don't get it, do you? You know, there are times and there are places where you are not allowed to be a jerk. You simply don't indulge yourself because there are much more important things at stake. You keep the big picture in mind instead of your petty concerns. You know, this, this article that I was trying to write before you lost it for me was about your Uncle Ed. Yeah, your Uncle Ed, the article that you've been begging me to write because you don't like the way the tabloids and Roger Thorpe's TV news are handling Uncle Ed, right? But no, you'd rather, at this moment in time, walk around here like a big jerk, the Dark Prince, showing off for his girlfriend. <clears throat> you know what I'd like to do? I would like to go into hot, buying you out of this newspaper business because, buddy, you got no business at all being in here in this newsroom. Now get the hell out of here. But you know what? If I were to leave, this whole place would probably fall apart. I know this may be beneath your notice, Fletcher, but I am the one who pays the salaries around here. 
want to make sure that all the advertisers stay on and don't pull out because, because maybe you write an editorial that they don't like. I'm the one who orders the equipment around here, make sure that it, it's repaired. I'm the one who pays the electric bill. As a matter of fact, I'm the suit around here to make sure that everything goes, goes well so that prima donnas like yourself can have a job to go to. Sure. All right, so let's look at the big picture here and find out if there's an automatic backup system on this whole thing. I'm going home. Um, I'm finished my work. I'll see you tomorrow. Tangie, wait, wait a minute, okay? Hold on a second. Where are you going? Tangie, wait! You see me at my worst now, I hope. You know, I don't need you to fight my battles for me. I certainly don't need you to embarrass me in front of my co-workers. I could wring your neck for me. Well, go ahead, ring away. If that's no, 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 make no, wait you a feel second. Better. Don't tempt me because I might do it. I just want to get out of here right now. What are you doing? Today at 5 on Channel 2 News. No one has the right to mess with another person's life like this. Not a friend, not a lover, not a spouse, no one. This was my decision and you should have respected it. I did, I do, but I respect much more all the years you've worked at Cedar. That doesn't wash. I committed a crime and that is what I am being judged for. Not Mrs. Lyman's appendectomy and not the CPR I performed on the cop down at the station. I mean, performing those skills is my job. It's... <laughs> what do you think it is, a miracle? Ed. You're like other human beings, you know? You're innocent until you're proven guilty. The minute I took that drink and got behind the wheel of that car, I gave up my stop right... Stop it! Stop it right now! Ed, you don't remember a thing, so just stop it. Oh, I'm infinitely impressed. You know, I've never dated a guy who's had a key to the elevator before. Look, the janitors had keys to the elevator. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just... I'm trying to... To what? To what? <sighs> what? 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 I'm trying to show you how highly I think of you and how much I admire you. Oh, oh, really? Well, then you decide what I think, and then you plow ahead anyway. You know, I've been there. It's called control. You know, that's your favorite phrase, I've been there before. You're not so... You're a little young to be so world-weary, yeah. Tangie. You know what? If that's what you think of me, that I'm just some... another guy with an ego problem, then fine. This is my stuff. Wait, 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 wait a second. I didn't say that. No, I'm just... I didn't say you. that you were another guy, any other guy. Hello? Oh, no, um, we're, we're sorry. No, we were dealing with a personal issue. I, oh, yes, right away. Thank you. Security. Other people want to use the elevator. Well, they can use another one, because you know what? I'm not finished with you yet. Look, Bill, I know you want to protect your sister. But I'm a husband, okay? And I would never do anything to hurt her. All I know is that she's upstairs crying and she doesn't want to see you. So you're not coming in. No, Bill, I am coming in. So why don't you just move out of the way, all right? Uh, I don't think that'd be a real good idea, Nick. Why don't you go on back in, Bill? I'm not a little kid anymore, Hampton. Yeah, hey, look, look, I know, I know. Um, but your mom asked me to come give you a little backup. I got to do it my way, okay? Okay. All right, good looking up. Look, don't give me an excuse to hurt you, look, Nick. I don't want to fight with you, Ham. That's real okay. smart of you. But this is really none of your damn business. Well, look, look, look. I'm just standing in for a good friend of mine, you know? Doing what he would do if he could be here. I'm trying to protect his kids. So. My wife does not need protection from me, all well, right? Well, these people are kind of like family to me, too, you know? And I don't know all the particulars, but if Mindy doesn't want to see you, I'm sure she's got look, a good reason for it. All I want to do is talk to her, okay? I want to explain things to her, say that I'm sorry. Is that so terrible? Well, no, it's not. Unless uh, she doesn't want to see you and you don't want to take no for an answer. Now, you were asked to leave, right? Now, I'm here to ask Man. you one more time, real nice, Nick. Now, if you don't do it, I'm not gonna be so nice. Look, haven't you ever done something that you need to make right? Sure, sure. And there were times I couldn't make it right because it was just too late. Now, I've stood by and watched this girl take it from you and your family time and again. I'm just saying enough, Nick. Look, look, this is between Melinda and me and nobody look, else. Look, man, she came to see her family to get away from you. Now, I'm sick to death of seeing people that I love get walked over because they care too much. Just for being too damn decent. Now, you need to go, or you're gonna have to deal yeah. with me. I, I, okay. I think we've come to an understanding here, Tari. Melinda? Sweetheart, look. 
You couldn't possibly hate me any more than I hate myself right now, all right? And everybody's right. You don't owe me a damn thing. I mean, you've given me more chances than I ever deserved. Look, I'm ashamed of myself, all right? I am. But please, there are things that you need to hear before you close the door on us forever. That's why I'm making a pest of myself out here. So look, just, just, can you give me five minutes? Five minutes alone, that's all I'm asking for. And after that, you can tell me to leave and I won't say a word, if that's what you want. sweetheart and I will never never stop regretting the pain that I've caused you but it's really important that you know that I hated hated keeping you in the dark you see I convinced myself into believing that that it was better that you didn't know and that I was doing this for us for our future for what kind of future could I possibly have Melinda if it was a future without you so I need you to tell me, just tell me, all right? Tell me what you need me to do to save our marriage. I mean, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you want me to do. What do you want? Do you want me to, do you want me to, to give it all up? Is that it? Do you want me to give up Spalding, the money? Do you want me to give up the presidency, everything? Please, just tell me, Melinda. What do you need me to do to get you back? And you, it's been so long. Ever since that awful day, Vanessa found out about our little trick. <laughs> Darling, where are you? I'm very far away. As far away from you as I could get. As a matter of fact, Alexandra, I'm on the other side of the world with Melinda and our children. You have children now? That's right. Darling, I'm so sorry I pushed you so hard. I've really learned a lesson, Nick. Please come back. Let me prove that to you. Not in a million years. <laughs> Darling, at least... At least tell me where you are. No way. The only reason I'm calling you is to let you know that I've never been back. Nick, wait, wait. This is a terrible connection, darling. Wait! Please, please go back. Okay, keep, keep going, keep going with the tape. What? All right, wait, wait, stop it, stop it. What, did no. you see something? Yeah, yeah, back it up. Pa pass the blonde. Okay, okay. There. Look. Who the hell is that? That's you? No, it's not me. I was never at the bank. I didn't close this account. I didn't withdraw that money. I didn't get a cashier's check from the bank. Well, Russ, there has to be some sort of explanation. Look at this. No, this can't be happening. Wait a minute. What? Is he chewing gum? Yeah. I never chew gum. You're right. This guy's definitely chewing gum, though. Look at that. I don't know who the hell this guy is, unless I had a blackout like Ed or something. Freeze frame, right there. What? Look at that. You're not wearing your wedding ring. You never take your wedding ring off. Honey, I can't get it off. Well, 
Well, I would kill you if you did. You'd be dead meat. This proves it, Ross. This guy is an imposter. You know, that explains everything, because I was there that day at the bank, and I called out your name to him. He didn't turn around, so I didn't really get a chance to look at his face too clearly, but I know he heard me. Touché, Alan. Imagine what he went through to pull this off. All of this just to set me up. All of this to get me to sign over his assets. And he almost got away with it. Ambles. You have already tried, convicted, and sentenced yourself, and the trial hasn't even started, Ed. Do you know how painful it is to listen to you? You are so positive that you're guilty and you don't remember anything. What does that mean? Because I don't remember something, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't excuse me. I know that, but I'm not asking you to do something wrong. I'm not asking you to lie or to, to jump bail. Staying at your job is not against the law, and no one has asked you for a letter of resignation. Because they thought that I would have the decency not to ask them to do that. What do you want me to do? You want me to wander around that hospital pompously giving orders? You want me to pretend I am some kind of a healer? You are a healer. I am the hit-and-run doc. Haven't you read any of the papers? Would you little? stop doing this to yourself, and I'm not going to let you, and I'm going to interfere if I want to, because you interfered in my life when I had breast cancer. And we both suffered when Maureen died. Ed, my life's work is healing, too. And to me, it's the greatest crime in the world not to give life if you can. So if there's one chance in a million you didn't hit Dylan, then all those people whose lives you could save, it would be wrong of you not to. If you can practice a procedure, or if for one second you, you can make a diagnosis that would save someone's life in the next few months, you're going to tell me it wouldn't be wrong to do that? Ed, if you talk to that patient and his family, could you possibly do that and say, I'm sorry, but my need to punish myself is greater, much greater, than my need to give you the gift of life? I never said that you were some other guy with an ego problem. Oh, except when you accused me of trying to seduce you. Well, on no, wait a second. Me you up. accused me of the same thing. Well, too bad we weren't both right. We would have saved each other a lot of trouble. You know, we? all I'm saying is that I didn't want to be rescued. I didn't want somebody to tell me what to do, how to feel. Maybe in the old life, yes, but in this life, I'm set in this life, I like it. I like making my own decisions, paying my own way. You know, it's tough sometimes, but I like it. I like it a lot. So what you're saying is I'm just infringing on your new style, is no. that right? Stupid. I like you too. You just you just freak me out. I couldn't believe how pushy you were. Okay, okay, listen. What if what if Holly or Fletcher were trying to move you up the ladder of success? I mean, would you have been so ticked off at them? If there were strings attached, yes. You think there were strings attached? Great. You know, how do you see me, Tangie? I mean, I'm not the sick, desperate guy that you found on the beach. I'm not the, the corporate tool that you once thought I was. And no matter what Roger Thorpe keeps warning you about, I am not my father's clone. As a matter of fact, I, I know everything that I'm not. The thing that I'm having trouble figuring out is who and what I am supposed to be. After all of that time we spent together in the boathouse, I, I felt like a clean slate. I felt like all of the... The confusion and the uncertainty had all washed away. I knew who I was, and I felt great about it. And that's part of the reason that you mean so much to me. And ever since then, I have been trying like hell to hold on to that feeling, and I, I'm just afraid that it's, it's slipping away. Like a dream when you wake up. Yes, exactly. Maybe that's for the best. Is that Alex? It's me. Yeah, you look so distinguished. It's been a long time since I've seen you. How long has it been? 25 years. Since my father died. <clears throat> you and I used to be so close, Dick. Oh, yes. Well, that was back in the Dark Ages, wasn't it? When you chose Nick over me and treated me like a poor relation. 
and hounded my father to his grave. Don't say that, dear. You know I loved your father. I loved my brother. I was absolutely devastated when I learned he was sick. I would have given anything, anything in this world, to save his life. I've been absolutely lost without him. The reason I called you here is that I won't tell you that in his honor, I'm going to leave you spalling. I don't need your handouts anymore, Aunt Alex. <coughs> Why don't you give it to Nick? <coughs> if you can find him. He would have to be so cruel. Your father would have forgiven me. He loved me. Sometimes I think he was the only person in the world who really loved me. So now I am alone. All alone. Oh, Alan, please don't leave me. Please, you're the only one I have left. You can't leave me. Anything for me, Nick? No. No, you've always been very supportive of everything that I needed to do. And that's one of the reasons why I love you so much. But I need to know, Melinda. Do you still love me? Yes, I love you. Well, then we can get through this. Look, as long as we love each other, that's all that counts. I used to think so. Well, you were right. Look, sweetheart, don't you understand that this, this experience is just gonna make us stronger, that's all? I know that I, I have never loved you as much as I do right now. Well, it's easy to love someone when you're afraid you're gonna lose them. The real test is when you have them in your pocket. I know that you're still angry with me for what I did to your family. I'm angry with you for taking the beautiful life we could have had together and trashing it. And I don't think I'll ever understand why you did it. You had everything, Nick. You had a great career as a reporter. You had plenty of money, a woman who loved you, and it wasn't enough. No, that's not true. That's not true. It wasn't enough, or you wouldn't have wanted to live in the Spalding Mansion, become the next Spalding president, and spend every day wheeling and dealing with your mother. I don't know, maybe it's partly my fault for giving in and going along with it, but I just loved you so much. I wanted you to be happy, and I really believed that my happiness was important to you, too. It is. It is, Melinda. Of course it is. I know, but our life together is always somewhere in the future. It's after the next deal and after the next intrigue, and... I have been real patient with you, but you went too far this All time. Right, look, you heard me ask, okay? You heard me ask what you wanted me to give up to, to get you back. What more can I do? If you want to give up this life, I think you should give it up for yourself. Because if you don't, then you're going to be lost. All right, look, Melinda, what can I do to convince you? How can I make you believe that I don't want anything as much as I want you? There's nothing you can do. Because I don't believe it. Because you had me, you really had me, and it wasn't enough. And you saw how much I loved you, and how much I was suffering. And you turned your back on me. And after what you did to my family, I mean, you used me. You used me to try to get to them. But the truth is, Nick, there is something inside of you that wants the Spalding life more than you want me. So you got it. 
You got exactly what you wanted. at this guy, the more I realize how superficial the resemblance is between us. Well. You know, for one thing, I mean, this guy is seriously middle-aged, you know that? Mm. And for crying out loud, take a look at his hairline. What about it? Honey, it's heading north. It's receding, okay? Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, and if you look real carefully, right around, right here, right what, around, what, right what? there, right there, look, he's hiding just a little pot belly oh. under his coat. You see oh, that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I like the people at the bank, especially Blanche, but I don't see how she could give $1.4 million to this guy thinking that it was me. I mean, anybody who sees this tape is simply not going to believe it. Okay, so let me get this straight. You want me to just forget about everything that happened with the two of us at the boathouse, is No, that what I'm saying is, I think you should forget about some idealized version of what you think I am. Some half angel of mercy, half free spirit standing on the beach with the wind in her hair spouting poetry. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it is that it isn't true. It's a fantasy. I don't have time to wash my hair, much less stand on the beach and let the wind blow through it. At night, I wash beer glasses and wait on people who are too lonely or too scared or too broken down to even go home. And then in a day, I process personal ads for people who are just as lonely and scared. So what you're saying is you're just, you're an angel of mercy, just not for me anymore. What I'm saying is I don't want to be your fantasy because I'm too busy being who I am. And I think if you gave me a chance, if you gave yourself a chance, you'd realize that you like the real me a lot better. Excuse me. Stop the real world. Great. Do real people go on dates? Yeah. How about tomorrow, then? Fine. I have nobody left. Nobody. I've driven everybody away. Alan, please don't leave. Melinda, can you hear me? Melinda, you're wrong. You are so much more important to me than Spaulding ever could be. And I swear to you, I'm going to prove it. by Robert Rose. When your child's at stake, you better know your husband isn't about to play fair. Now who will be the master of this game tomorrow on The Young and the Restless?